In this video, we are discussing a very important topic that is global illumination model using ray tracing. So, what is the ray tracing? We shall be discussing that one into details. So, for each pixel on the image plane, a ray is projected from the center of the projection through the pixel into the scene. So, now just consider this one. Here we are having one projection reference point. This is a projection reference point and there is a pixel position on the projection plane and here, here we are considering that one ray is passing through this respective pixel and falling on this scene. So, for each pixel on the image plane, a ray is projected from the center of projection through the pixel into the scene. The first object that the ray intersects is determined. So, the first object the ray is intersecting or ray intersects will be determined. So, here this object has been determined. The point at which the ray hits the object that is the ray intersection point is also determined. So, where this particular point on which the ray has hit has caused the hit, so that point will be also determined. The color value is then calculated according to the direction of the light sources to the surface normal. However, if there is another object located between a particular light source and the ray intersection point, then the point is in, is, is in the shadow and the light contribution from that particular light source is not considered. So, when this particular object is being shadowed or is being obstructed by another object on the way of this ray, then obviously this particular object will not be considered. So, however, if there is another object located between a particular light source and the ray intersecting point, then the point is in shadow and the light contribution from that particular light source is not considered. So, I think all these points whatever written here is clear to us. Next one is the, the ray is then reflected and projected from the object until it intersects with another object. So, from there, from there it will be reflected then it will be, it will be intersecting with another object. If the surface is a transparent surface, the ray is refracted as well as reflected. So, when the surface is our normal surface, then obviously in that case only the reflection will take place, but if the surface is our transparent subject uh, surface, then obviously this incoming ray, the part of it will be refracted and the rest will be reflected. So, here we are having this incoming ray with this angle of incidence theta, so reflection the angle of incidence will be theta. So, here we are having this angle of incidence is theta and the respective uh, your um, angle of reflection. So, that will be also theta and here obviously depending upon the refractive index the diffraction angle will be calculated. The point at which the reflected ray hits the second object are determined and the color value is again calculated in a similar way as we did in the previous first object. The reflected ray is then reflected again from the second object and this process continu continues and until the color contribution of an intersected object is too small to be calculated and to be considered. In practical situation, we would specify the maximum number of reflections that a pixel can make to prevent spending too much processing at a particular pixel. So, we can have some upper bound, so up to which we will be doing the calculations, otherwise that will be excessive calculation in our study. So, all the color values calculated from the intersected objects will be weighted by the attenuation factors and which depend on the surface properties of the objects and then add it up to produce a single color value. So, all these color values whatever we have calculated from the intersecting points, so they are to be attenuated, so they are to be calculates they are there to be attenuated depending upon the surface of the respective object and then they are going to get added to get the ultimate single color value. This color value becomes the pixel value. Because ray tracing method calculates the intensity value for each pixel independently, we can consider specular reflection and ref refraction in the calculation. Hence, the method can generate very realistic 
images. So, as here we are considering this particular intersecting points for each and every reflection and all. So, obviously, there is a finite scope to produce realistic images. The major problem of this method, however, is that it requires a lots of computations and therefore, this method is slow. So, obviously, here we are having depending upon the, uh, the upper bound up to which we will be doing the calculations depending upon the intensity contributions, depending upon the number of times we have uh, we have considered that that will be the upper bound for which we will be going for this calculations. Whatever it is the computation due to the huge computation the response will be slow. Now, to calculate the color of a pixel consider the following diagram. So, here is one diagram we are having. So, this is our respective light source, this is from the position we are viewing this is these are the two surfaces S1 and S2 having got two reflective indexes let it be row 1 and row 2. These are the surface normals. So, that is our N1 and this is our L1 is the light which is falling on this the light vector which is falling on this respective point on the surface S1 then it is getting reflected. So, it is the E2 and this is our N2 this is the surface our this one is S2 the respective reflective index is P2. So, C 1 is the point and C 2 is the point on surface S 1 and S 2 respectively N 2 is the normal on the surface S 2. So, all these things we have demonstrated here. Now, see assume that surfaces S 1 and S 2 have the reflective indexes that is our row 1 and row 2 respectively. Given the surface normal vector N 1 and the light vector L 1 and the respective surface S 1 we can calculate the color let it be C 1 of the surface at the point where this i ray E 1 intersects the surface where the i ray intersects the surface. Next one similarly given the surface normal vector N 2 so this one and the light vector L 2. So, I think this one so light vector L 2 and the surface is S 2 we can also calculate the color C 2 we can also calculate the respective color C 2 of the surface at the point where the i ray E 2 intersects the surface. So, that is the E 2 which intersects the surface. The color for the pixel is then calculated as. So, C p is equal to rho 1 C 1 plus rho 1 rho 2 C 2 plus in this way the color can be calculated for the respective point. So, this is the basic philosophy lying behind this ray tracing and global illumination. Thanks for watching this video.